became a developer because I literally wanted to change the world uh, and get paid. I, I've been, as you heard, in a bunch of technical companies doing um, everything. I was really in these companies at very pivotal times, right? So I started at IBM when web services and cloud, it wasn't called cloud back then, but web services was just becoming a thing. But my AI journey really started in artificial intelligence, specifically at Amazon. Uh, it was actually, does anyone remember the Fire Phone? It's a good phone, man, good phone. Anyway, needless to say, maybe I was biased, but uh, we were all standing there like, you know, droopy from the failure of a massive product. It, it's good, it should happen to everyone. Um, it's very, you know, humbling. And then we, the, the organization's like, let's build this thing called Alexa. And everyone's like, it was one of those moments where I'm like texting and they're like, whoever wants to be on the team, step forward. And like everyone like stepped back. And I'm like, what, what just happened? So I was the first solutions architect uh, and evangelist for Alexa. And I looked around, and I was like, is this thing gonna work? I would say, how many in here like really know what Alexa is? Right, right, come on. Now, just five years ago, People thought I was crazy, crazy. Now this man right here is my dad. He's in a Star Trek t-shirt. He raised me well on Bradbury and Asimov. And he would tell me, um, those stories don't end well. And so I should be careful what I'm doing. Um, and so I got very conscious about the type of technology I would build. All of the skills that even today run on the platform, some of them are extremely popular, um, are skills like mindfulness. I have the only one word, wake, for, wake word, for mindfulness on Alexa. Daily kindness, Christmas kindness, daily affirmation. So if you do any of those skills, if you haven't, now's your chance. But if you do, and I have about a million people who have tried it, um, and they're super simple, but they were magical to the people that use them. And five years ago, they were magical because no one thought they could talk to a thing in their kitchen. People now do it every day like we've been doing it our whole lives, but it's extremely fast. So I'm super excited to be here because I want to share with you a, a couple uh, reasons that creativity combined with AI is important. And you as technologists, if you are in the room and you consider yourself a technologist, why it's important for you to adopt this, not just because it's cool, but because it's really important. The first thing, uh, see my, well my dad, you know, he's in his 70s, he can't use a phone, smartphone, he's, he, he doesn't want to, but he also has a cognitive disability. He uh, suffered a traumatic brain injury getting run over by a car. He was a pedestrian. Um, but he's fine. He's a Marine, right? Like, he's like, I got this. It's fine. I'm like, but your legs and your shoulder and your face. Um, but he ended up being fine, but he can't use a phone. What he can do, though, is he can talk and he can read and he can consume knowledge and share knowledge and Alexa opened the world for him. My son, Max, has Down syndrome. He's 14 now. He was pretty verbal, I guess. But Alexa, again, opened the world for him. He now can quote entire movies. <laughs> I kid you not, he can tell by the sound of like the trailer starting on YouTube, he knows what something is. And the only way that that was possible was because he could invoke and ask for those things with his voice. Now my babies, which is where I'll go next, my babies, uh, I have two and four year old, they can pick up my phone they can type in this cool keyword, which obviously isn't that hard. Um, and <laughs> but then they hit a magic button, and it's the microphone button. And this is really where AI started for most of us, right? Siri, way back in the day, talking to our <laughs> telephone systems that were awesome. But they hit a magic button on the mic, the microphone button on a phone, and they say to YouTube kids, "Bus," and Wheels on the Bus shows up, or Peppa, and Peppa Pig shows up. They're two. Imagine what happens when they're 14 when they're 22, when they're 44, the world, they're gonna expect the world to respond to their voice naturally, contextually, and they're not gonna care about Alexa or Cortana or Google. They just wanna be able to speak and the world will respond. And so AI is very much driving towards conversational um, AI and, and making sure that natural invocation is possible. But then there are so many other models that I wanna share with you over the next few minutes that can also enhance the world. So it's not just about creating cool tech, because all the tech you're gonna see today is amazing and cool, but it's also about changing the world for people who could not ex access this tech before. It was impossible. They couldn't even work in this tech. Now I have, alongside of me, software engineers that have cerebral palsy or Parkinson's disease, and with technology, they can play. 
And they should, they, they should be able to play. Why wouldn't they? And the tech is now available to do that. So I wanna share with you the first video that came out the day I started at Microsoft. Um, I, I just want you to see it because I want you to share in the moment that I had when I started with the company. So let's just play it really quick. It's only a minute, so hang in there. Today, right now, you have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. Think about that. That's what technology really is. It's possibility, it's adaptability, it's capability. But in the end, it's only a tool. What's a hammer without a person who swings it? It's not about what technology can do, it's about what you can do with it. You're the voice, and it's the microphone. When you're the artist, it's the paintbrush. We are living in the future we always dreamed of. We have mixed reality that changes how we see the world and AI empowering us to change the world we see. You have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. So here's the question, what will you do with it? Like, let's go every time I see it. I've seen it hundreds of times, right? Yeah, it's like, this is amazing. Um, and Microsoft made that commercial, but it wasn't really about Microsoft at all. It was about this, my mom saw this on television. Why would we show this to people who would never build AI? AI used to be reserved for the special few, right? Those that were, you know, PhDs, I heart PhDs, love all of you that have them. Um, I personally don't, maybe, Honorary, I'll take them if you got them. But other than that, probably won't get one uh, the old-fashioned way. Um, but that was the only people that really could build with AI in the past. And the world is changing today, and I'm going to share some of that with you. But before I do, I want to set the stage. Again, another no-no, but bear with me. I'm going to share a quote that every CEO I've ever worked for has shared with me. So what is, C what is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, check, 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 a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know that just one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. Now, I, for a very long time, was like, Ralph Waldo Emerson, metaphysician, awesome guy, thinks it's fantastic, and then found out actually a woman wrote that. So Bessie Stanley, awesome woman, fantastic. <laughs> Technically, Mr. Emerson made it popular, but want to give Bessie some shout out as well. But the reason this is important is because our, we need to have, if for those of you boaters out there, we need to have a deep keel in the right place when we're building with AI. We're not just building a mobile app anymore. We're now building software that will make predictions, that will give guidance. It does not really make decisions as much as people try to say that, but it does give guidance. It gives that guidance in the form of numbers, and we as humans go, oh, 99 means awesome, do it. 82 means maybe don't. 70 means absolutely not. But then the next person, those numbers are totally different for them, right? A 72 is maybe go for it. Um, right, so these confidence numbers are completely discerned by us as humans. But technology has to be rooted in something. And every CEO, every technical CEO I know has rooted it in, how are we gonna fix the thing we're doing? How are we gonna make the world better? How are we gonna you know, create a redeemed social condition? So we have more power than ever. Um, and I'll ask you guys to help me with this one. With great power comes Prayers, right? Spider-Man, Emerson, Bessie, like what else do you need? Um, yes, with great power comes great responsibility. We at Microsoft have started and have jo been joined by all major technology companies with a responsible AI program. It's not my job to tell you about this today, but you should know that it exists because you, after seeing this, are gonna wanna run and build AI. And my hope is that you will bring alongside with you people that have expertise, not just in artificial intelligence, but also 
in the domain you're in. So if you're, for example, um, I don't know if some of you saw it, but we were just recently featured on NBC News, um, and I worked with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Anyone from the Met here today? Yeah, oh, eight in the back. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, it was a fantastic project. We brought in seven data scientists from MIT, and then a bunch of curators from the Met. Now, it was kind of like high school, or maybe junior high, right, where like the curators are over here like, I don't, I don't know which team I wanna be on, and then the data scientists are like not even making eye contact, right? So I was there to kind of, okay, everybody dance. <laughs> um, and we ended up creating some really interesting projects, but what we learned the most out of it was the best projects were not just the cool technical ones. They were the ones that purely leveraged the expertise, the passion of the curators and combined it with the capabilities of AI. So I'm gonna share with you today what anybody, any dev, anyone here who's probably taking classes at uh, NYIT, anybody who is a developer, even if you just started yesterday, you can use this AI. How many of you in here would say you're familiar with machine learning? A few of you, okay, good. So you know what I'm talking about, the pain is real. It sounds easy, but it actually starts with data, and the data almost is never awesome. And so then you have to figure out the data, you have to identify features in that data. Those features might be right, or you might get it totally wrong and have to start over. There's a reason why AI has always been in research, because it was like fail a lot, win a little. It was like golf, maybe my golf, <laughs> right? Every so often I'd hit the ball and I'd be like, this game is awesome, and then I'd be bad for a really long time. So same idea with like AI. Sometimes you make bad decisions, but you use that information to build better models. You also, like I said, have to curate your own data. A bit difficult to do, but for the right problem, that's the only way to go. This is the kind of stuff that changes the world. These are the things like outside. Um, one of the things in the NBC uh, piece that was on television was that they were looking at, I think, Sotheby or whatever that auction house is. Sotheby's, thank you. I know. I'm like so not into pop culture stuff like that, but um, but yes, they, they auctioned off a AI generated portrait that was being built off of Renaissance oil paintings. Is that right? I think, I, I, like we had oil paintings in the Renaissance, yes. Um, it was more of a test to see if you're like hanging out with me. <laughs> so I, I got that side of the room. We'll work on you guys back there. Um, but they used AI to generate art. That was one of the interesting things that I saw in the Metropolitan Museum of Art project was that the first sense of the people most passionate about art were kind of resistant to AI. The people that you'll see grace this stage today will, will not be of that variety, but they are people that love art and are you know, embracing AI to help them. But that wasn't the case, right? These people, like they uh, curated thousands of years of art and they're like, wait, what are you doing with that? And you're gonna generate new stuff? What is that new stuff? Like, what is that new stuff? That new stuff isn't art. And they ultimately all came around. They all came around to see that it actually improved their ability to tag art, to identify art, to accurately describe art to the masses, and most importantly, to provide an accessible way for everyone on the planet to learn more about art. And that made everybody pretty happy. So what Microsoft has decided to do is realize that it's not really just us providing you models or you building it yourself. Why don't we let you build on top of what we've done, right? We could say like build on top of the shoulders of giants. So we've created what's called customizable AI. It allows you to take an existing model Microsoft has created, decades of work, start where we left off and just add a couple, maybe dozen pictures and create a new model that you can export and own yourself. It sounds, Again, for you ML people in the house, hopefully you'll be excited about that, but you would never go in and build some of these things um, that I'll talk to you about. You'd never wanna go and build a facial recognition model again. You'd wanna improve it, but you don't wanna start from scratch, right? That's a bunch of wasted time because there's companies that have done that. We call it commoditized models. There's certain models that we've done. So start where we've left off and make it better. So your data added on top of an existing model is really nice, right? So let's talk about what these models can be. So there are a bunch of people involved in this, right? I'm gonna talk about the magic, the stuff that sits on top, but you should know that infrastructure 
The actual hardware that runs these models is important. The magic you're gonna see on stage today, every, everything that I saw in the pre-run, I was like, oh, that's so cool, oh my gosh, that's so cool. It isn't lightly done. There are hundreds of people working on it, but more importantly, there's infrastructure and cloud resources that you really have to consider. Um, and I just want you to be knowledgeable about it, mostly because my friends work on these teams and I want you to know that they exist. So we support this nice platform level, but we also have this really uh, very hard <laughs> to configure uh, infrastructure level and then tools to build everything yourself because there are always devs that just want to do it all the, you know, the old fashioned way on Notepad um, <laughs> in Emacs. <laughs> so, so that's just to give you a, a kind of an in-depth view for those of you who want to dive deeper, each one of those boxes is like a whole class all by itself. So let me show you the fun part. The, this is me trying to activate, what is it called, the reticular thing, activation system, when you buy a new car, or I'll just do that one, right? And it's a certain color, and you're like, no one has white. No one. And you buy it, and you roll out, and like you see nothing but white versions of that car that day. Because your brain is turned on to that. When you start looking at problems, I want you to think, like you're like, oh, I might build an app for this. I want you to first think, can I use any of this stuff to do it? Because it's a single line of code away. It's a web service call away. So you'll see here things like facial recognition, celebrity detection. What could you do in an app if you could like identify whether you're a celebrity or not? I know I would make myself a celebrity maybe. Um, text and handwriting recognition. That's awesome. Imagine if I could have someone hold up something and I could read the text right off of whatever they had written. A post-it, right? Or a form that they had filled out. Um, Speech recognition, making, in my case, art accessible to the world. I'm super excited to make sure that everything cool that's being talked about today, can my son please play with it? Can my dad play with it? The only way he'll, they'll do that is if they can talk to it. So we need to just add that layer in. Spell checking, translation, knowledge, being able to provide an inquisitive mind the ability to investigate how you got to where you are. We are in a world where people actually care how you built that thing. They want to go to your YouTube channel. They want to listen to your podcast. And so now you can enable right into your app or right into your art experience, as you saw out there, the ability for people to just ask questions in a natural language and get answers to their questions. Um, and then, of course, being able to just find things on this planet, huge amount of data on the planet. How do you find it? We've got a bunch of web services for that. So these are all single calls in your app. So if, you have a, if you're a dev, this is like beautiful. You want to know that this exists because what we often do is hit one of these and go, oh, yeah, I probably can't do that. Machine learning team, can you do that for me? By the way, super busy people, and there's like four of them, right? So um, there's a lot in this room, but usually when I ask, there's like two in the room, and that's kind of representative of our industry. So there's very few of us to do the massive amount of work. So that's another reason why Microsoft's like, here, Let's enable the devs to do more. Let's enable the technologists to do more. So I'm going to end with um, just a quick demo. I just, uh, and live demos, right? So all of you in the back, like positive vibes, yo. Uh, live demos, you never know how they're going to go, but I'm going to try. Um, oh, first I should explain it to you. Uh, I'm going to try and explain it. But when you're building anything, whether it's art, like I said, you're going to want to make sure that you've kind of complemented um, the technology with expertise in the area. So if you're doing like healthcare, you'd wanna make sure a clinician is involved, right? If you're doing art, make sure that you've got like some, like if you're not the artist, if you're just a fan of art and you're building tech, you wanna make sure you have an artist. If you're an artist, make sure you have a technologist. This is why there's always a CEO and a CTO, right? One that's passionate about the business, the other one that's like product truth, here's the tech. These two things can sometimes exist in one person, but it's really relaxing when you have two people or two teams kind of working together in this way. So my, Microsoft's super passionate about custom voice, so I'm gonna um, actually demonstrate a couple things for you, but really more about um, kind of what this, uh, let me show you here, like a couple of these. We have a few web services that are available to be tested out. How many of you know what GitHub is? Okay, good, that was another test. Well done, whoa, you're all with me now. Um, so GitHub, this project I'm about to demonstrate for you is in GitHub, you can actually rebuild it yourself and then you, all that code is open source. So you can take this code and put it in your project. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek. 
So this is the Intelligent Kiosk. It's literally in GitHub, Intelligent Kiosk, you'll see it. These are all just web services that are being shown here. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate one for you so you can just see the, the uh, possibility. But you'll see in here things that are somewhat similar to what you'll see a little bit later, like Halloween photo booth, where we use overlays of Halloween stuff. And um, let's just take a look at Vision API Explorer, right? Maybe. I'd want someone to be able to, I don't know, authenticate to get into a museum. I could have them just take a picture of themselves um, and maybe I want to uh, have them take a picture of themselves next to an ID of some sort. So I'll just type in like driver's license or something like that. Typing one-handed and in front of a ton of people is very nerve wracking. <laughs> All right, so hopefully none of these are you. Um, but no, I'm just kidding. Google actually provides a bunch of this for people like me who want to run uh, data and analytics on driver's license data. It's all fake. But here's one, and you can see what happens. Th what just happened is I just took this image and passed it into a web service. One call. And now magic happens. The AI model starts rendering a bunch of data back to me. Things like color. So if you're an artist, you can take a picture of someone in front of you and then show them art that's in the color of what they're wearing. Pretty cool. You can also detect their faces and their age range. I like it because it often says I'm 33, no matter what, which I'm a fan of. <laughs> so I think the model's fantastic. Um, and uh, also, if I was taking a picture, let's say uh, I was taking a picture of you guys, it might detect that there's a screen right there. It might detect that there's a computer that might detect that you have glasses on. Um, so it uses object detection. All this came from a single call, but most importantly, it gives me the ability to pull the text right off this driver's license. That is hard, hard work, and I did it in a single call, and now as a dev, I can do this work. So this is just one, and it's a quick example because I don't have a whole lot of time, but the world is open to you. There are so many opportunities. I hope you will listen to all the ways that some of these pioneers on stage today um, have demonstrated the use of this technology, combined it with their passion for art and their expertise in that space, um, and then I hope you go and play yourself. I'll be on GitHub, I'm definitely on LinkedIn, and I hope to connect with all of you. So, thank you.